Good afternoon to everyone and welcome to today's session. I hope you all have taken uh, the full scale grand test. And every Sunday, religiously, we take an opportunity to do the discussion. So from uh, now to November 30, every Sunday, one grand test and a discussion in the afternoon. And from December 1st to December 31st, every day 9 to 12 a test and 1 to 4 discussion. So that you get almost 30 grand tests every day in the month of December. So good to see Ashima Kaushik, Sri Lakshmi, Jessica Kajulia and many more who are all online. So keep punching the answers, which is very, very important. So, um, yes. Jefferson's fracture. Keep punching your answers, doctor. Good to see. Uh, Dr. Lakhani, Ben, and many more who are all online. Please also inform your classmates that the live class has started. Jefferson's fracture is the fracture of the first cervical vertebra, is what you need to remember. And uh, cock up split. It is typically used for the radial nerve palsy. Pulmonary embolization from the deep vein thrombosis. Four to five days after the injury is the typical time when the patient presents with dyspnea, petechia on the front of the chest, etc., etc. Sudden classification. Neurotmosis, the axon as well as the nerve is broken with the proximal and distal degeneration is what you should remember. Ruptures maneuver. Whenever you are relocating the shoulder, what do you do? Traction, external rotation, adduction, and internal rotation is what you need to remember. So you'll be applying a downward traction of the humerus Now, umbilical blood vessels, when does it disappear first? Typically, it is the right umbilical vein. So, one vein, two arteries. That is the composition of the umbilical cord, as uh, all of you know very well. The central canal of the spinal cord is exactly in the center. In case of lumbar vertebrae, CSF will be surrounding the cranial nerves. Which cranial nerves? One, two, seven, and eight is what you should remember. See, every day we have a, 
एक डिस्कशन रिलीजियसली सिक्स पी एम टू एट पी एम टेल ऑल द वर्ल्ड दैट यू आर बिजी फॉर द नेक्स्ट फाइव मंथ्स टू कम एवरी डे योर स्टडी मेट क्लासमेट बेंचमेट मुरली बर बैच इज गोइंग टू कम सो टेल द होल वर्ल्ड दैट यू आर गोइंग टू बी क्वाइट सीरियसली रिवाइजिंग पार्टिसिपेटिंग इन डिस्कशन ऑलमोस्ट सिक्सटी टू हंड्रेड क्वेश्चन वी डिस्कस अकॉर्डिंग टू एशियर यूर टेल ऑल यूर फ्रेंड्स दैट हे आई एम गोइंग टू टेक अ टेस्ट ऑन एवरी संडे एंड चेक हाउ गुड आई स्टडीड इन द एंटायर वीक along with the discussion in the afternoon so our 6 to 8 pm sessions daily live broadcast will be little more detailed whereas on the sunday full scale grand test will be running fast only few places we will go slow okay so that is the reason if i appear too fast please don't uh, be angry on me but if you solve the question paper this entire discussion does not look uh, very fast once more i am trying to tell you don't postpone let me take this later later the later will never come now is important right now the bony vesicle ossicles or the middle ear cavity are arranged in a series and the bridge the tympanic cavity and end where the end at the oval window is what you need to remember now the pericardia of the neurons they provide sensation of the taste in the anterior two thirds of the tongue so who mediates that geniculate ganglion geniculate ganglion so you should know terego palatine fossa otic ganglion then trigeminal ganglia innervation facial nerve ganglia innervation that will be 100% sure if you are not at sure you have done this wrong please go back to the online mbbs.com we will be to do the revision the type of the femoral fracture where a vascular necrosis is a complication typically if it is cervical area so if femoral fracture can be stable and cervical and between the lesser and greater trochanter area or below the trochanter so the sub trochanter area so you have the head and cervical area so cervical area is most vulnerable to end up in a vascular necrosis is what you need to remember calcification of the internal carotid artery whenever it impinges on the lateral half of the right optic nerve what will it lead to it typically lead to right nasal nasal hemianopia right nasal hemianopia you know the visual field can be divided into temporal nasal nasal superior and inferior so once more if you have done this question wrong go back to the ophthalmology in online mbbs.com video library and do a thorough revision of uh, visual field defects definitely annual equations 47 year old railway coolie from kolkata pain in the neck right arm weakness it is extending to the loss of sensation the right thumb and the middle finger there is also eryflexia of the biceps so that is a classical picture whenever the cervical disc prolapse is there the location at which disc prolapse is there commonly c5 c6 the place where the disc prolapse is there compression is there that particular area whatever the reflex is there it goes into a reflexia below that it is all hyperreflexia that means t1 c8 L1, anything you check below the level of C5, C6 is all hyperreflexia. At the level of the C5, C6 biceps, typically there is a reflexia. 
is what you need to remember. Galiazi fracture. What is it? Galis kaha hota hai? Niche hota hai galis. So fracture of the lower third of the radius and dislocation of the radio alar joint is called galiazi fracture. So galis kaha hota hai? Niche hota hai. So typically, if you take the radius, the lower part of the radius associated with the distal radio alar dislocation is called Galiazi fracture. So this is another example. Lower part of the radius with the dislocation of the radio ulnar joint is called as Galiazi. The most common component is sprained ankle. Anterior talofibular component of the lateral collateral ligament is the one which is most commonly sprained is what you have to Basically, remember that. Now, Doc, what is the earliest sign to appear on the X ray in acute osteomyelitis? Earliest to the periosteal newborn deposition is the earliest thing to appear. So, the head of the second metatarsal with the periosteal newborn formation which is characteristic of osteomyelitis is what you should remember. The most common infection of the hand is acute paronychia which is a superlative pus forming inflammation of the nail fold of the soft tissues most commonly because of staphylococcus is what you have to remember. If you want to manipulate club foot, what is the order? So you should remember adduction, inversion, plantar flexion. All India entrance, you can remember. All India entrance. A is adduction, I is inversion. And equinus deformity, that is plantar flexion. Equinus is the plantar flexion. That is the order in which correction is done. So, the cavus deformity should be corrected prior to correcting other deformities. Typically, the sequence of correction in ponicity. So, that is the reason. Adduction, inversion, then plantar flexion. Now, Anti-natriuretic action is there for natriuretic peptide. Atrial, natriuretic, brain, natriuretic. How do you evaluate congestive heart failure patients, doctor? You will be getting the brain natriuretic peptide levels. If they are more than 300, 250 to 300, that means there is congestive heart failure. So you have got a very good prognostic marker, especially those who are having the Diastolic heart dysfunction. We use the BNP levels as a gold mark. The rate of absorption of the sugars, highest for hexoses. Where will capacitance of sperms, epididymis, may sperms go, sperms mahagyani banjayega, epididymis. Keep punching answers, doctor. Don't disappoint. Whether it is right or wrong, don't worry. You should get the habit, habit of answering. That is most important. So, I like to once more tell all of you that. Um, Where are our Sunday tests that we discuss? I'm saying Sunday tests. Every Sunday there's a grand test, full scale grand test. So you should also know where are those grand tests available. So, um, yeah. 
I like to take you to this uh, very interesting uh, location. So, doctors, once you come to nextneedpg.com, you reach our uh, online test series place. So here, when you come down, you have this 65 need PG full scale mock test series. So, agar aap yaha click kare to, yeah. So once you click over here, uh, you will be reaching the 65 need PG full scale mock test. So every Saturday evening, we will be hosting one new test. So, if you come here, all the tests of April to May, April and May and June. In June, we have four tests. So, 7th June Sunday, 14th June Sunday, 21st June, 28th June. So, already 7th June is over, now 14th June. So, here you need to take the test. And whatever now we are discussing is that test. Okay, so first have a clarity how to get it. So please call our helpline 9000868356. Get a subscribe to our full scale grant test. Every Sunday, don't tell that I'll become better, I want to take. Uh, Full scale grant test somewhere in October, November. Mera senior bhi vaisa kiya, mai bhi vaisa karunga. No, no. Unless you start now. If, even now is late. April. April onwards, you should make a habit every Sunday to be challenging yourself with the 300 MCQs, image based, clinical grid based, just like the actual need PG. Once you finish taking test, whatever be the score it comes, don't worry, but take a test. Team Gante by take test later. Lene ke baad, do bahar, Dr. Murli Bharadwaj will be available to discuss some of the questions. So that you get that ignition, which is required. Monday to Saturday, I am anyway available in order to uh, Study along with you, evening 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. No worries. So that is the reason, doctor. Um, I urge you all to uh, take every opportunity to take the test, join the discussion after taking the test. It makes a great difference. Now, muscle, spindle, Golgi tendon organ. These are the two concepts, doctor. Examiner Chodega Nahi. Golgi tendon organ. Definitely one question. Muscle spindle maintains the muscle length. So the gamma motor neurons, they maintain the sensitivity of the spindle over a range of the length of the muscle. So accordingly, muscle spindle constantly will be looking how much the muscle is stretched. It keeps informing to the spinal cord. Accordingly, spinal cord will take a decision whether to contract the muscle or not. That is very important. This is called alpha gamma co-activation phenomenon is what you should remember. The efferent fiber bundle of the substantia nigra Transmits dopamine to which area? To corpus striatum. Ringer lactate may kya hota hai? Chloride, sodium, potassium, not bicarbonate. So if I ask you, what is the most physiological solution of all the solutions that you offer? Ringer lactate. Its composition is similar to an extracellular fluid. 
Sodium ion will be 130 chloride, 109 lactate, 28 potassium, 4. Calcium ion 1.5 millimoles and osmolarity will be 273. pH will be 6.5. That is the Ringer lactate. Vestibular nucleus. How does it receive the afferents? The afferents all coming from equilibrium. So cochlear is hearing, vestibular is equilibrium. Astasia, abasia. Typically you see in the people who are having hysteria. It is an inability to either stand or walk in a normal manner. So the patients exhibit an unusual, dramatic, guided disturbance lurching wildly in various directions and falling only when a nearby physician, family member or a somebody is there to catch means they will fall. That is astasia, abasia, which you typically see in case of uh, hysterical individuals. Otosclerosis can hurt not. There is a dip at 2000 hertz on the bone conduction curve. Pharynx contain pyriform fossa, posture pharyngeal wall, post cricoid area. Carcinoma in situ. How do you want to treat? Stripping. Stripping is considered to be the management of choice. So earlier days, before laser surgery was popular, Radiation they used to use even for carcinoma institute, but not anymore. Meniere's disease may kya hota hai? To leophenomena, Lermoyes syndrome, tumor kin crisis. Achha bhaiya, eh, Meniere's is endolymphatic sac hydrops presenting with deafness, vertigo, tinnitus. Vaha tak hum sab ko samaj hai. Malum hai. So what is Tulio phenomena? Any sound will induce vertigo, giddiness, nausea, nystagmus is called Tulio phenomena. Then not only linear, even superior canal dehiscence syndrome, there is a Tulio phenomena. Then Lermoyes syndrome, Attacks of tinnitus, diminished hearing, deafness followed by vertigo. After which hearing improves. That's called Lermoyes. Lermoyes. Vortolithic crisis of tumorkin. So typically, without any other minor symptoms, the patient will have a sudden drop on the floor and immediate recovery upon standing up again. So these drop attacks are basically called otolithic crisis of tumor kill is what you should remember. Now, a 12 year old male complains of poor exercise tolerance. Muscle cramps. Then, whenever he is doing strenuous exercise, there is a myoglobinuria. There is an exercise intolerance. What is the glycogen storage disorder? One guy. The muscle glycogen to glucose one phosphate converted. So is the one which is missing. So it is more likely to be phosphorylase, mechardal. So mother cramps on painful exer exertion. Whereas one guy is glucose 6-phosphatase, which is typically there in liver and kidney. So these patients will have severe hepatomegaly, hypoglycemia and acidosis. A agent that specifically blocks the interaction of the inositol triphosphate with its intracellular receptor. 
typically will decrease the activity of protein kinase C. So you should know this is phospholipase C2, this is protein kinase C. So phosphoenol pyrophosphate divides into diacyl glycerol and inositol triphosphate. In turn, diacyl glycerol will go and act on protein kinase C. So inositol triphosphate formation and protein kinase C activity are closely associated with each other. So what is protein kinase C? It is a very important component that help to mediate the signal in transduction cascade so that the lipolysis is occurred, hydrolysis of lipids. So where do you see the role of the protein kinase? It modulates the membrane structure, regulates the transcription, mediates the immune response and regulates the cell growth is what you should remember. A 17 year old female, short stature, amenorrhea. And her epithelial cell contain heavily methylated DNA. So heavily methylated DNA has a low transcription activity. So you should know euchromatin what is the effect of post transcriptional modifications of the DNA everything in biochemistry a 71 year old male with severe abdominal pain with hypotension begins to hyperventilate there is a metabolic acidosis increased anion gap that means lactic acidosis high plasma lactate so which the low activity of which enzyme lead to lactic acid formation it is the pyruvate dehydrogenase pyruvate has two choices pyruvate has two choices pyruvate can form either acetyl-CoA by the action of pyruvate dehydrogenase or it can convert into lactate. The moment pyruvate dehydrogenase is not working, acetyl CoA doesn't form, and pyruvate has a greater tendency to form the lactate, is what you should remember. An infant is having aldolase B deficiency. So, what you should remove from the diet? You should remove sucrose because sucrose lead to fructose formation and fructose become converted into fructose one phosphatase phosphate fructose one phosphate fructose one phosphate for it to be converted into dihydroxyacetone and glyceraldehyde it is the aldolase B which cleaves it. If there is an aldolase B deficiency, lot of fructose phosphate accumulates. So if fructose one phosphate when it is very high, it acts as an inhibitor of glycolysis, gluconeogenesis, and hence hypoglycemia will occur. Fructose one phosphate, whenever it accumulates, it will accumulate a lot of phosphate. Phosphate is all sequestered into fructose 1-phosphate. So there is no phosphate available for the ATP formation. And that is the reason there is a toxic effect on liver, kidney and the small intestine is what you need to remember. Now doctor, an infant born appears healthy at birth. But later on, he is found to have a transfusion dependent hemolytic anemia, that means thalassemia. Why thalassemia? Beta thalassemia is not 
expressive in fetal life because the fetal hemoglobin has got alpha 2 gamma 2 beta thalassemia is a problem with alpha 2 beta 2 so because beta 2 change will take about 6 months after the birth to appear beta thalassemia has become symptomatic only after 6 months after the birth not in the fetal life 73 year old male high activity of an enzyme that is the reverse transcriptase activity which is adding a lot of TTA GGG repeats at the third end of the chromosome so you should know what is telomere telomerase you should be very sure go to see tapash Paul. I am so happy all of you are becoming members of uh, Incas.live Incas Please tell your friends also to be the part of Incas.live Once more I will give you a quick break to show you uh, the Incas.live so, Incas dot line. So, a good number of you are already the members of it, but until this concert become popularized, I keep uh, uh, repeating. So, you have a lot of friends across India. Every day, more and more are joining. I'm so happy and thankful to all. Of you for joining the Incas.live as members. So once you come to Incas.live, you have something called groups, just like Facebook groups. So if you go to, let us say, a subject called pathology, pathology. So you can see. Almost 2000 MCQs on every subject pathology, anatomy, physiology, biochemistry, etc. They're all being uh, pasted over here. And of course, answer is also available, but you can add some more points underneath that. Right? So that's how the discussion chain can be increased. Similarly, we have something called forums. So in the forums, you can write uh, some nice articles. How you crack an entrance exam? What is the success story? What are the insecurities? You can write a review on a book, on a coaching program. Everything, it's a free press. You can add some discussion forum topics. Others will follow. Similarly, in the groups on the Incas.live, Please take every chance to subscribe to this. It's a free, absolutely free. So here you type image. So there is a new forum we are starting called image based MCQs for NEET PGN, AIMS PGN. So almost 10,000 image based questions. We are going to discuss in this area. So like what is this lesion and where do you find it is a lishk nodule which is typically found in neurofibromatosis one of the favorite uh, image based mcq in the pg so what is your diagnosis of this patient who has bloody diarrhea typically it is an endoscopic image of ul ulcerative colitis where you have the serpinginous borders, but serpinginous is not that classical. But endoscopy will often confuse you to differentiate between ulcerative and the crops. Now, what do you see here? So, this is another very in this bloody diarrhea patient. 
So it is a active ulcerative colitis. So what you are seeing here is cryptitis, cryptapsis, etc. etc. So like that, 10,000 questions we will take for the discussion. Even on your mobile phone, it is easy. Just you can keep toggling and then do the revision of the image based questions. You can also write some nice uh, handwritten notes and upload the photo and then write, start a discussion on that particular uh, picture, just like an uh, Instagram post, right? And you can make friends, invite friends. So it is like a, a Facebook for the medical students, doctors, consultants, need PG aspirants, the whole student world. Originally, Facebook was uh, created by Mark Zuckerberg, keeping the student communities into uh, the focus. Later on, it went into making romantic relations, status, am I married, did I dump my boyfriend, etc. But Facebook, similar to Facebook, nowadays so many platforms are there, this is one of them. But this is for education and uh, finding study partners, making connections, sharing study material. Of course, there is a Telegram, WhatsApp kind of things, but this is something uh, you don't need invitation. You don't need to know it. You can just walk into it. So there is an advantage. So please be part of Incas.live, Incas.live. Okay, now. So, Let's come back to the discussion. So, regularly I am going to start, I uh, will post about some 30 image based questions on the Incas.live into the group and directly we will open up the group page and have a discussion on the incas.live group I mean a live broadcasted session so our idea is to make it popular so please share it in all your uh, whatsapp friends group juniors group seniors group and tell hey this is a facebook for need pg as friends incas.live you can invite and that's how our students are our brand ambassadors many times. So doctor, telomerase activity, typically those cells which are constantly regenerating, don't want to enter into semi-cells like epidermal basal cells. There is neurons, erythrocytes, everything. They're fixed. They can't continue to multiply. So telomeres are the tandem array of repetitive sequences. The single strand three end overhang and they are guanine rich strands. TTA, triple G. They are replicated by the cellular replication machinery. And uh, there are some telomere specific proteins like histones, DNA repair factor, shelterins, etc. etc. Now, doctor. Inner ear malformation in a fetus. When will it happen? Whenever a pregnant woman is exposed to German measles, cytomegalovirus, and thalidomide. Now, doctor, in a caustic neuroma, earliest cranial nerve to get involved will be the fifth cranial nerve. Right, gentlemen. So, absent corneal reflex or a depressed corneal reflex is one of the earliest clinical signs of a caustic neuroma. CSF rhinorrhea, how do you diagnose? We use beta 2 transferrin in order to diagnose. It is a very specific thing, specific for cerebrospinal fluid. A 55 year old presents with conductive hearing loss, facial pain in the temporoparietal area and lower jaw. Immobile soft palate on the right side. What is your diagnosis? This is called Trotter syndrome. 
रोटर सिंड्रोम होता है क्लिनिकल ट्रायल ऑफ यूनिलेटरल डेफिनेस न्यूरोलॉजिया इफेक्टिंग द ट्राइजेमिनल ब्रांचेस एंड डिफेक्ट टू मोबिलिटी ऑफ द सॉफ्ट पेलेट एंड इट इज ऑफन बिकॉज ऑफ द मेलिग्नेंट ट्यूमर्स व्हिच आर इन्वॉल्व इन द लेटरल फेरिंगल एब्सेस ऑफ अदरवाइज कॉल्ड रोजन मुजलर सा फोसा दैट्स कॉल्ड ट्रोटर सिंड्रोम Now, doctor, it is a tensor of vocal cords. Click on the noise. It is the tensor. What is the contraindication for the direct laryngoscopy? Any dysphagia, tinnitus, cardiac decompensation—they are all considered to be the contraindications. Forty-five year old, advanced with HIV infection, undergoes bronchoscopy for cough. Mucinamine staining shows budding is, which have a thick capsule. Immunocompromised, budding is thick capsule. Mucinamine positive. Itna close dene ke baad bhi, if you can't recognize the organism, it lead to meningitis. So. we are talking about cryptococcus neoformans it has got a anti phagocytic polysaccharide capsule which is the major virulence factor methylamine silver stain can identify yeast forms and the mucinamine typically it stains red it usually affects similar compromised transmitted by respiratory route it lead to meningoencephalitis and also lung disease so all these uh, uh, small small things you should know aspergillus fumigatus septate hyphen immunocompromised blastomyces dermatitis round yeast broad budding broad based budding candida albicans yeast pseudo hyphae on potassium hydroxide coccidoides thick walled spherules histoplasm capsulatum it is found intracellularly inside the tissue that is within the macrophage it appears like a small ovoid and budding yeast cell rhizopus lead to rhino cerebral infection can cause pulmonary disease in immunocompromised histology shows broad hyphae with irregular branching so one characteristic feature of all these fungal infections definitely they will ask in need pc a 5 year old boy typically he has breathing difficulty dysphagia drooling fever high temperature wbc count high severe and epiglottis acute epiglottitis is because of h influenza and why h influenza h influenza occur because of a missed vaccination in spite of immunization people may develop h influenza why because the strains responsible do not produce capsule that's a possibility because your vaccine is all towards a capsulated capsule of the h influenza and in spite of taking that uncapsulated strains can still infect a person immunized with the hemophilus influenza type b vaccine typically mutation in neutrophilic oxidase it lead to pseudomonas infections a 45 year old occasional hemoptysis past tb and his apex of the lung is typically showing a cavity filled with a round mass of hyphae you should jump and dance it 
It is colonization by aspergillus. A sample of contaminated moist soil is heated 100 degrees Celsius for 15 minutes. So with the heat exposure of the soil sample, you can get bacillus anthesis. EMB agar, metallic sheen, gram negative rod. What is the talk answer? It produces fimbrial antigen. So you should know. Eosin methylene blue agar. It is also called EMB agar. So if you want to differentiate lactose fermenting from non-fermenting microbes, you use EMB agar. And in the same medium, if you add sucrose, you can differentiate between coliforms that will be able to ferment sucrose more rapidly than lactose and those which cannot ferment sucrose. So, what are the examples of EMB? Proteus mirabilis. It is a non-lactose fermenter and colorless on McConkey. There is no metallic sheen on EMB. And on SS agar, it forms pale colony with the black center. And on the blood agar, it causes a swarming growth. So if you have done this question wrong, Doctor, you should go back to do the review in microbiology. So on EMB, E. coli produce a distinctive metallic green sheen as what you can see. Now, E. coli strains isolated from four year old female with bloody diarrhea. They produce a substance that inhibits the protein synthesis in human cells. Now, the E. coli toxin resembles the mechanism and properties of Shiga toxin, Shigella dysentery. A patient on amoxicillin develops diarrhea, pseudomembrane colitis, Clostridium difficile. How does it? Uh, damage the gut. Typically, it will affect the cytoskeletal integrity, is what you should remember. In toxocariosis, the infection is acquired by both dogs and cats. So, you should know the entire toxocara life cycle. Eight year old male. Two day history of fever, abdominal pain, diarrhea. There's a pet puppy which has a diarrhea one week ago. So that's an important clue. Campylobacter, classical history. 22 year old female with severe pain, swelling of the right knee. Always remember. In a sexually active young individual who has Monarthritis involving knee. Always think of gonococcus. So probably barrier contraception would have prevented this gonococcal infection and arthritis. Plastic syringes are sterilized by ionizing radiation. Forceman antigen is a heterophile antigen. Slit clamp examination will show Lishkin nodules in neurofibromatosis. So these are the Koyapi Busakka nodules, which are typically seen in granular matters uveitis. In Hansen's disease, plasmoid iridocyclitis is typically seen. And there can be a corneal neovascularization, iris pearls that can appear in Hansen. And these are the classical 
brush field spots which are small white or grayish brown spots on the periphery of the iris typically in kid with downs sarcoidosis can lead to band keratopathy so one of the favorite mcq in exam is what are all the various conditions associated with band keratopathy any hypercalcemia causing condition then uh, uh, yes what are the abnormalities in trachoma trachoma can lead to tylosis trichiasis entropion but not ectropion so lower eyelid ectropion cicatrical lack of thalamus and uh, chronic blepharitis they are seen in lamellar ichthyosis they should all cicatrical trachoma lesions basically so similarly complete paralytic ectropion can occur in a patient who has got ipsilateral pyrotrit tumor then medial cicatrical ectropion can occur in a patient who has got a basal cell carcinoma now doctor a young patient recurrent to vitreous hemorrhage always the important rule recurrent vitreous hemorrhage young individual india jis desh mein tb bhati hai so that endogenous tuberculin protein allergy can lead to periphlebitis of retinal vasculature leading to recurrent uh, retinal hemorrhages vitreous hemorrhages which are called eels disease is what you need to remember 10 points about eels please go back to on an mbbs.com video library if it is a fluorescent angiogram there is a late leakage from the peripheral retinal neovascularization in case of eels disease so the peripheral retina will reveal vascular tortuosity and peripheral retinal neovascularization from the orbital apex which extraocular muscle arises inferior rectus superior oblique superior rectus not inferior oblique inferior oblique is a very thin narrow muscle placed near the anterior margin of the floor of the orbit bronchial asthma tibial or pita blocker no big deal and a graft kidney how do you do immunosuppression cyclosporin ecadesia parkinsonism galactoria amenorrhea why do they occur if you are giving antipsychotic because of the blockade of the dopamine receptors transdermal scop scopolamine typically is used to manage motion sickness tia a patient of tia cannot tolerate aspirin so what is the alternative ticlopidin is the alternative hyperkalemia is a contraindication for spironolactone spironolactone is an aldosterone antagonist what is the effect of aldosterone doctor this is glomerulus bowman's capsule and uh, distal convoluted tubule this is the place where aldosterone act leads to retention of sodium and loss of potassium into urine if you use pinolactone and agonize aldosterone you are preventing potassium loss and retaining potassium so already pinolactone lead to hyperkalemia so where is the point in giving it to a patient who has hyperkalemia misoprostol what is an indication misoprostol is to prevent gastric ulceration 
in the patients who are taking aspirin. Etic grenade disodium, it inhibits the formation of the hydroxyapatitic crystals. Alkalinization of the urine, typically in salicylate poisoning, to enhance the excretion of the salicylate into urine, you use alkalinization. Similarly, indications for acidification, alkalinization of the urine in toxicology is the favorite topic. Facilitated diffusion, the drug crosses the membrane against a concentration gradient in facilitated diffusion and required cellular energy. A nucleo nucleophilic attack disrupting the base pairs typically happens with cyclophosphamide. Beta receptor blocker like propranolol in angina pectoris. It will decrease the myocardial oxygen demand. Plague infections, tetracyclines are the drug of choice. In lepra reactions, we use clofazamine, which is a nucleoside reverse transcriptase in Vida. One question on HIV drugs. There is no paper without it. So it is a back away. Dalcidamine, Lamibudin, Abacavin, Emtricitabin, they are all Eraptias. Once more, doctor, go back to onlinemibios.com with library and take a chance to review anti retroviral drugs, which is the favorite topic of exam. A 25 year old girl using spectacles, last 15 years, comes with photopsy. Photopsia. Sudden loss of vision. So, photopsia, sudden loss of vision, young girl, big, big spectacles. What does it remind you? Retinal detachment, which can be better seen with indirect ophthalmoscopy. So, once more, differences between direct and indirect ophthalmoscopy, which is curious which has got a stereoscopic view, everything you should be sure. Now, this is how you can see two retinal tears in the periphery that you can identify with indirect ophthalmoscopy. Most common cause of blindness in India is cataract. In retinitis pigmentosa, ERG, EOG will be subnormal. There is a primary optic atrophy and there is a decolorization of the retinal pigment epithelium. And always the central vision is retained until end because macula will not get affected in early stages. It get, macula is important for central vision. Central vision is affected only very late. By the time all peripheral vision is gone and this is called tunnel vision which is typically seen with uh, retinitis pigmentosa. So bony spicules, waxy pallor of optic nerve, atrophy of retinal pigment epithelium and retinal arterioles because of all the pigmentation, they undergo attenuation. So retinal vessels, you can't see that clearly. And there's a bony spicule, this is called bony Spicule appearance that you see in case of retinitis pigmentosa is what you need to remember. Wake up, everybody. Keep punching answers, keep talking. Otherwise, I feel I'm the only guy sitting here and doing the talking job. Right? So, this preparation is supposed to be more uh, studying together. Right? So, Doc, congenital glaucoma. Come on, punch with answers, Dr. Tapas Paul, Jessica, Amitesh Kumar, Shashank, Lakta here. 
Lakala, please uh, punch your answer for this question. Question number 89. Jago, Jago, Neend Se Jago, Mere Pyare Bharat Vasiyo. Punch your answers. Then I will be sure that uh, you are not sleepy and uh, are all awake. Punch, punch, punch. Punch the answers out. Question number 89. Yes. Shoot, shoot, shoot. Very good. Ben is proposing A. Anything? Anybody else? One loud answer. So, both the eyes are generally affected. Obviously, any congenital condition. Sturge Weber, neurofibromatosis are the common associations. And most effective surgery is trabeculectomy. Medicines are not going to help in congenital glaucoma. So, trabeculotomy, goniotomy, etc. etc. Now, Systemic inflammatory response syndrome. There is a hypothermia, tachycardia, hypothermia. You should know what is the definition of SIRS. Fever more than 38 or less than 36. Heart rate more than 90. Respiratory rate more than 20. And WBC count either more than 12,000 or less than 4,000 and more than 10% values is considered to be the deficient, which is an absorbable suture material. So you should know very clearly, absorbable, non-absorbable suture material. So polydioxanone is an absorbable suture material. So I will leave to you the literature doctor, surgical gut, plain gut, chromic that Dexon, Vicryl, Maxon, they are all absorbable. When a silk, Epilon, Dermalon, Proline, Ethibon, they are all non-absorbable. So you have to be very sure. Right? So we started almost one hour for uh, here. Let's take five minutes of voice rest. Five minutes intermission. Okay, so please stay online and uh, have a cup of tea from the kitchen, and then we will all join for a discussion back.
So welcome back to everybody. I hope you had afternoon uh, garam masala chai, right? So uh, let's continue. Autopsy of a 65 year old male demonstrates narrowing of the renal arterioles. The arterial are walls are homogeneously thickened and they stain pink with hematoxylin eosin dependent. So what is the most likely possibility? Diabetes mellitus, Kibblesteins, Wilson's lesions, grossly Subcapsular hemorrhage is with a flea bitten appearance. Where do you see? Whether there is any endocarditis associated with glomerulonephritis. So, similarly, if you see benign nephrostidosis, there is a fine leathery granularity on the surface. So, you should know differences between benign and malignant nephrostenosis type 1 membrano proliferative glomerulonephritis so you need to be quite sure on uh, uh, type 1 versus type 2 in type 1 you have subendothelial deposits tram track appearance tram track appearance low serum level of C3 they are all characteristic in type 1 whereas type 2 2 is called dense deposit disease so this is a normal glomerulus whereas there will be increased cells and a thickened capillary wall and intense staining with the complement C3 in case of dense deposit disease which is MPGA type 2, not type 1. That's the point you need to remember. Once more, if you have done this question wrong, revise glomerulonephritis in onlinemibius.com video library. Temporal arthritis. If you don't treat by giving high dose steroid, methyl prednisolone, about half of the patients will develop blindness is what you should remember. This is one of the very commonly asked questions. Benign paroxysmal positional vertigo versus central causes of vertigo. You should know all differences doctor. So, uh, if you look at the PPPV versus uh, central vertigo. The latent period is only few seconds in PPPV. There is no latent period in CNS. Distress is present in you ask a benign paroxysmal positional vertigo patient. Oh my God, doctor, I can't control. I'll fall down any time. Then the direction of nystagmus is fixed towards the undermost ear and the direction will be changing in central. Duration of nystagmus is less than 30 seconds in case of BPPV and it will persist while the position maintained. And fatigability, nystagmus will stop with repeated testing whereas repeated testing is the central cause of vertigo, nystagmus will persist. The differences between BPPV and uh, central, you should be very sure about. LMN versus UMN. So, atrophy is an LMN feature. Sparsity, UMN. And uh, in LMN lesion, the distribution of the weakness is more peripheral. Distal. All neuropathies are distal weakness, all myopathies are proximal muscle weakness, basically. 
in myopathy reflexes are normal similarly myasthenia gravis reflexes are normal there is no hyperreflexia or hyperreflexia now in frontal lobe disorder there will be a wide base short stride very commonly frontal lobe dysfunction is because of a vascular disease even communicating hydrocephalus patients also will have guide disorder dancing quality of guide is seen in chorea not in parkinsonism unmyelinated fibers and small myelinated fibers so you should know small fiber is burning burning doctor burning feeling and having patient will say large fiber large fibers are all myelinated large fibers are all vibration position touch etc they get affected in large fiber so you should be very sure that nociception pain temperature touch they are the feelings by the small myelinated fibers so let us quickly remember by heart small fiber neuropathy versus large fiber neuropathy you should know all the differences from loss of pain and temperature small fiber touch vibration position sense sensory attacks here large fiber relative preservation of reflexes motor function in small fiber and small fiber is electrophysiologically silent and you need to do quantitative sensory testing and skin biopsy whereas large fiber there is an impaired nerve conduction studies are enough that's the point you need to understand now A 70-year-old man, woman, pancreatitis, persistent diarrhea, osteoporosis, deep vein thrombosis. So she is taking cholestyramine. Which a drug cholestyramine has an interaction? Any fat-soluble vitamin like vitamin D. Vitamin D affected by cholestyramine. You should know. the absorption of the vitamin d is improved by calcium choline fats phosphorus vitamin a vitamin c whereas rifampin h2 blockers barbiturates heparin very important cholestyramine carbamazepine phenytoin phenobarbital they reduce the serum vitamin d levels favorite mcq in the tomorrow's exam anti diuretic hormone what are stimulants what are inhibitors but ti marne wala question hai aapke 200 pages notebook mein likhna chahiye hypovolemia hyperosmolarity nicotine morphine endomethacin histamine prostaglandins carbamazepine chlorpropamide they all stimulate anti diuretic hormone Similarly, congestive heart failure, cirrhosis, prolonged use of diuretics. There is what inhibit ADH, ethanol, phenytoin, glucocorticoids, GABA inhibitors. Please don't forget this list. Intraoperative radiotherapy. Where do you? In pancreatic cancer, Hogarth, Pringle, Menua. in hepatobiliary surgery typically you will be occluding hepatic artery so this is gall bladder liver this is stomach stomach this is duodenum here you have hepato duodenal ligament and uh, that is the place where you put a clamp or use your finger to uh, index finger is in the foramen of winslow and the thumb is ready to pinch the porta hepatis 
against the index finger, which is called Pringle. So a large atraumatic hemostat is applied to hepatodiodinal ligament, which is the free border of the lesser omentum. Now, if the bleeding continues, it is likely that inferior vena cava or hepatic vein will also traumatize. And uh, uh, normally the bleeding stops because hepatic artery is being occluded by Pringle's valve. Aid in biliary tract is a feature of endoscopic papillotomy, carcinoma, gallbladder, gallstone, ileus, any of them. So this is the right upper quadrant, ultrasound which is showing biliary tract A. This is the CT of the upper abdomen confirms the presence of the biliary tract A. So A within the biliary tree is a feature of papillotomy, following papillotomy. Testicular tumor with the highest association with cryptorchid testis, seminoma, seminoma. Medullary carcinoma of thyroid is associated with red proto-oncogen. Death of a patient due to an unintentional act with the doctor is called therapeutic misadventure. Premolars will replace temporary molars in permanent teeth. Once more, dentition is another very painful topic, doctor, in the new PG forensic pediatric Sarai Jagapi dentition on that. Whiplash injuries, any acute hyperextension of the spine during trauma lead to whiplash. Corona is a feature in near contact short wound. In heat stroke, the rigor mortis will set early and passes off early. So what factors delay and hasten rigor mortis? It should be there in your 200 pages notebook, Bhatti Maran. Anderson's Heinz operation typically is done for hydronephrosis. So ureteropelvic junction obstruction, whenever it occurs, you need to relocate the ureter, Heinz Anderson's operation. So this is a ureteropelvic junction obstruction with dilatation of the collecting systems and lack of excretion of the contrast you are able to see. Now, a 45 year old progressive cervical lymph node enlargement. So if you want to establish lymph node biopsy is the gold standard. Mass in right iliac fossa on laparotomy carcinoid 2.5 centimeters. What do you want to do? Segmental resection. So the treatment of choice is a surgical excision if feasible. In most appendiceal tumors, small appendectomy is sufficient for treatment. But in intestinal carcinoids, you need to do a block resection of the tumor along with adjacent lymph nodes must be attempted. Regarding thyroid cancer, Hartel cell is a variant of medullary carcinoma. FNAC Sorry, Hartel cell is not a variant of uh, uh, medullary follicular. FNAC cannot differentiate follicular carcinoma from medinoma. But when you call micro carcinoma of the thyroid, it is less than one centimeter in diameter. So Hartel cell carcinoma is a more aggressive neoplasm than papillary or other follicular carcinoma. So Hartel cell is a type of follicular. Regular sign is also called the double wall sign. Where do you see? In pneumoperitoneum. So 
when the air is present on the inside and outside peritoneal side luminal side then that is called regular so if this is the intestine wall if there is any perforation then the air will leave out so air will collect outside the wall and it is also there inside the wall and make the wall to become prominent is seen the football sign is seen in gastric perforation causing pneumoperitoneum so this is a gross pneumoperitoneum with the air under the both hemi diaphragms so this is the falciform ligament and uh, the regular sign where air is seen on both the sides of the wall fast even aims uh, june 2020 also the same question came focused abdominal sonography for trauma fast is accurate for the detection of more than 100 ml of blood and the purpose is to detect the pressure of the free intra-abdominal or pericardial fluid penetrating trauma as it is un unreliable hollow viscous is difficult to diagnose using fast so focused abdominal sonography in trauma is used for the assessment of blunt abdominal trauma so you will divide the abdomen into the various quadrants as what you can see here nine parts hypochondrium epicostrium loin umbilicus iliac fossa and hypogastrium so each of these quadrants what do you see everything anything about the fast you have to be very sure about no doc. The most common cause of its hemorrhage hemorrhage with the hair, berry aneurysms, fistula in ano. How can you identify the track? Good salts rule, everything you should know. MRI. MRI can make you identify the most complicated tracks of the fistula in ano. Who passed that skeleton into urine? That means calcium into urine hyperparathyroidism patients commonest source of extradural hemorrhage with the hair middle meningeal artery varus needle where do you use that but typically whenever you do laparoscopy we use varus needle you want to do the insufflation of the carbon dioxide and produce pneumoperitoneum 50 kg adult man the last question for today's evening 40 percent burns first eight hours how do you how much do you need to do so you should know head and neck nine percent each arm nine percent handle thorax 18 percent posture thorax 18 percent each leg 18 percent perineum one percent the rule of the nine you can't forget so the rule is four ml per kg body weight per percentage Half of it is being given in the first eight hours. So 4 into 15 into 40 is 8,000. Half of it, 4,000 ml is given in the first eight hours. So doctor, once more, I want to tell you all, every Sunday, morning 9 to 12, make it a point religiously take a grand test with a timer or I'm saying online test once upon a time people have to travel to a classroom sit in a big crowd and by 12 o'clock I used to arrive in Hyderabad Nampali center and then uh, we used to have a live uh, face to face but the days have changed coronas internet everything teacher can sit in home in pyjama you too can sit in home in pyjama pyjama to pyjama right so enjoy a great wonderful yearly rainy season
Sunday afternoon, right? And uh, tomorrow once more, six to eight, six to eight every day. Let us all meet up religiously to do the revision. This next whole one week is the final week of gynecology obstetrics revision. But please don't forget to call our helpline and subscribe to online MBBS.com video library, full scale grant test, live discussions, everything. Good night.